like students sort of get trapped in the mezzo box. And what I mean by the mezzo box is that they are told to play soft and they play mezzo piano, they're told to play loud and they play mezzo forte, and they never expand outside. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about getting trapped in the mezzo box. And I think that this is why it happens. The sound is produced by the vibrations of the reed, which is resting essentially on your lip, which is connected to the jawbone, which somehow connects to your eardrums. So when you're playing, your head is vibrating a little bit. And when you're playing like bass clarinet or contrabass clarinet, the really, really low notes will actually, you will feel your head physically vibrating and your vision will get weird because your eyeballs are vibrating. So those little vibrations like actually affect the way that you think you sound on the clarinet. If I'm listening to myself play the clarinet, I know what it sounds like, and I know it's going to be slightly different from what I'm used to hearing myself. It's sort of like when you hear your voice for the first time on like an answering machine or in a video and you're like, oh my god, my voice, that's what I sound like? I'm so sorry. No one likes the sound of their own voice because it's not what you think it sounds like because like playing the clarinet are you know the sound of our voice is produced in our vocal cords and that's like all in our head so we have a completely different sense of like what we sound like as opposed to what other people are hearing if that makes sense sometimes you think you're playing louder than you actually are, and sometimes you think you're playing softer than you actually are. And if there's a student sitting next to me, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for a super loud sound, but I will never tell them that they're playing too loud, because generally they don't. It's sort of like if you go to, like, a theater production, and this could be, like, a play at your school, a musical on Broadway, whatever. So you see this theater person on stage acting, and they look totally normal. Like, their hair looks great, their outfit is, like, perfect, their eyes pop, their, you can see their lips very clearly, because you're, you're watching them from a distance. Like, you're way in the audience, and they're up on stage. And then, say it's your friend who's acting. And then you go backstage to, like, congratulate your friend on a job well done, and, like, she's got blush and like these huge like eyelashes and tons of makeup and it's like not really clown makeup but it's like really really intense and that's because she was on stage like it looks great from far away but it's a little too much up close that's kind of like how I feel when students are practicing by themselves or they're in a room or in the room with one other person like you're not in a hall you're not like trying to project you're not trying to get your sound out because you're in a little tiny room and I don't like that I think you should always play the way that you're going to play in a performance setting so don't be a weenie with dynamics that's what I'm trying to say if you're gonna play forte play Frickin' forte. Play loud. If you're, if, okay, if you play bass clarinet, bassoon, any low wind instrument, especially, and your conductor tells you that you're too loud, you're doing it right. This does not apply to low brass. This is like mostly low winds. If the conductor tells you to back off a little bit, you're doing it right. I hardly ever tell my students to back off because I just want them to be able to produce as much sound as possible with a good tone and they're doing a great job. So if you're a student of mine and you're watching this, hi, good job. And like I've said before, the louder you play every day and the softer you play every day, the more control you will have over the sound. So get those practicing minutes in. And like one thing about playing soft so, there are two types of clarinet sounds that are soft. One is like this really soft, sort of fuzzy, airy quality, kind of like a clarinet whisper. 
And the other is sort of like a very focused, quiet sound. Like the whisper and the very focused, quiet sound were around the same decibel level. But I think that the very soft, focused sound is way more awesome sounding than like an airy sort of like whispery tone. I don't know. It's just, it's personal preference. It's totally a tone thing. It could totally fit in with the type of music you're playing. But there are two ways to play soft, one focused, one airy. You choose. And choose wisely. There is a great example of a piece. Um, if you know the quartet for the end of time, you will know that the third movement is a solo clarinet movement. It's about seven minutes long at eighth note equals 42, I think. It might be 44. Um, it's, it's on my Facebook page if you follow me under my videos. Uh, but the reason why it's a great example of a piece in terms of dynamics is because it covers every single dynamic that there is. This seven minute piece, super, super slow piece, you will play every dynamic possible. And it's going to sound so boring if you stay in the mezzo box. Eighth note equals 42, and you have a whole note. 42 is really slow. So it'll be like one, and two, and three, and four, and that was a whole note. That was, I don't know how many seconds that was, but that was a whole note in quarter note equals 42. And by the way, that was a total guess on 42. That might have been a little fast. You should listen to it. It's called Abyss of the Birds. Or in French, I'm going to kill the pronunciation, but I think it's Abîme des Oiseaux. I studied French in high school. Quartet for the End of Time by Olivier Messiaen. It's spelled M-E-S-S-I-A-E-N. I have to, like, write it out on my leg. It is bomb. So don't get trapped in the mezzo box. Practice playing every dynamic. This does not apply to low brass.